Meanwhile in Russia, July 2023rd. Among other current Russian news, I find these ones particularly interesting and worth sharing. Please check them out. Gasoline prices breaking record high. Apple iPhones are getting banned. Russian ruble has lost 25% of its value. Attorney General Office investigators' pensions skyrocket. Moskvich sales hit the record numbers and more. Without further ado, let's jump right into the news. The Ministry of Transportation plans to add an additional fee to every plane ticket booked in Russia. This fee, that can be around from 150 to 300 rubles per ticket from a dollar to about three dollars, is proposed to form a reserved fund for passenger support in case of bankruptcy of airline or emergency flight cancellation. So basically, the ministry wants to move the bankruptcy risks or flight cancellation risks from airlines to Russian air travelers. To me, that's a sign of troubles in the air of transportation industry. They know that something is coming up and they're trying to prepare. This also shows how they work. Perfect stepping stone policy example. Tax by tax, increase by increase, fee by fee. Nothing big, just incremental increases, you know, buck here, two bucks there, for your own good, for your own safety, for your own protection, of course. And when you wake up at the end of the year and you look at your wallet and you go, what is this? Why am I paying so much? They get back to you saying, hey, we did this at your, at your approval, at your silent approval. And, you know, you have nothing to say. And this is how they are boiling the frog. Or should I say, this is how they are boiling Russian people. Moving on. The employees of the Ministry of Industry and Trade, as well its subordinate structures, will be banned from using Apple smartphones in their professional activities starting from July 17, 2023. Devices based on iOS and Android operating systems have already been prohibited from being used for professional activities by employees of the presidential presidential administration, the chief of staff. You know, I wonder what is there besides Apple and Android? Pigeon post? Oh, good. I prefer them not to speak at all. They've spoken too much already. That wasp nest. Moving on. Right now, ruble, Russian ruble, is trading at 90 rubles per dollar. In the last six months, Russian ruble has lost 25% of its value compared to American dollar and world's key currencies. Since June 24th, and that's 10 days only, Russian ruble has lost 6% of its value. Couple comments from me on that. First comment, I'd like to address this fact a dollar at 90 rubles, to some Russian economists and a large number of loggers, who last year at the same time were screaming on top of their lungs, a Russian ruble is getting stronger, this special military operation only strengthening our economy, oh, we're literally getting up from our knees, oh, we're shaking off West's influence, look, Dollar is at 55. Well, what do you say now when dollar is at 90? And this is just the beginning. Get ready for dollar over 100 and rising. Because Titanic's compartments have been flooded and the ship has started going down. So folks, next time you hear vloggers saying that Russian economy is doing well, have them take their words and shove them up down their throats. And my second comment, Russian ruble at 90 is nothing unexpected. Expected to happen. Ask any economist, normal economist. And to learn what will happen to Russian economy in the future, tune in to my videos and live streams. I explain there. Moving on. According to Russian mainstream newspaper, Komsomolskaya Pravda, 
percent of correspondents believe that ruble will stand strong despite all the sanctions, but American dollar will soon disappear. So 44% of Russians believe that Russian ruble will withstand that what Putin is doing to it, an American dollar will crash and disappear. Hmm. I seriously think that they also believe that the earth is flat. No further comments from me. Moving on. If you found what just... If you found... I'm sorry. Moving on. If you found what you have just heard interesting, please help me spread the message by making reposts in your social media accounts. Thank you. And this is where it becomes a mad circus, really. Russian President Vladimir Putin met with Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin yesterday late. They discussed the situation in the Russian economy. Well, obviously. According to Mishustin's forecasts, Russia's GDP will grow by more than 2% by the end of the year, 2023. For five months of this year, the growth, growth has been 0.6%. The Prime Minister considers the manufacturing industry to be the driver of this growth. Inflation at the beginning of July is 3.4% low and the end at the end of the year it's forecasted not to exceed 5%. <laughs> this is this is a mad circus. We are seeing, not hearing, but seeing economy collapsing right in front of our eyes. And Mishustin publicly, yes, the report of the meeting is at Kremlin's website. He publicly says everything is great. You know, I just have a, this one crazy idea. What if Putin actually believes it? What if he lives in a crazy bubble? And there's a good analogy. Portugal's late dictator Antonio de Oliveira Salazar was fed an absurd fantasies by his aides to make him believe that he was still governing the country. He was still in power for two years after he was replaced because of failing health. They even made a fake newspaper just for him to read every morning with good news, of course. Could you see this happening in Russia? I mean, how else would you explain this mad circus happening? Moving on. Since the beginning of 2023, stock exchange prices for gasoline in Russia have soared by more than 70%. 70. And at the end of June, they broke the historical record. 58.7 thousand rubles per ton of regular gas and almost 66 thousand rubles per ton of the premium gas. That's unheard of. But no worries, Russians. The Prime Minister Mishustin just told Putin that everything is fine. GDP is growing, inflation is low, and all is better than expected. Hmm, what do you mean you see the real situation of the gas pumps? Get yourself glasses, then. Your eyes must be broken. Moving on. The volume of natural gas extraction in Russia is declining at a double-digit rate for the second year in a row. Compared with pre-war levels, extraction collapsed by 24%, according to Russian statistics agency Rostat. In May, according to the official data, 48.2 billion cubic meters of gas were produced in the country, although in the same month of 2022, a year ago, it was 57.5 billion cubic meters. And in the pre-war May 2021, 63.1 billion cu cubic meters. But no worries, Russians. The Prime Minister Mishustin just told Putin that everything is fine. Better than expected. Oh, did I already say that? I'm sorry. I keep hearing it over and over again. I started it repeating it myself. <laughs> let, let me rephrase it. No worries, Russians. Everything is going according to the plan. Moving on. An interesting news coming from the country prosecutor general's office. 
More than 250 billion rubles, that's around 3 billion US dollars of unconfirmed income were confiscated from Russian officials in 2022. Almost 8,000 properties have been returned to the state. You know what's amusing about that? That happened, if that happened at all, in complete silence. So either they have been doing it covertly confiscating property to, you know, returning it to the Russian budget. That way, it looks very similar how they have been mobilizing Russians silently. The same style. Or simply that the attorney general is lying and nothing has been done. Nothing has been confiscated and returned to the Russian state. And you know what? Bo in both cases, it's pretty amusing. Moving on. Due to Russian ruble losing its value fast, prices for cars in Russia will rise by 15-20%. All Russian media is reporting this today. Well, wait a second. Moskvich is a Russian car made in Russia, paid for in rubles. How is this possible? What does Russian exchange rate have to the Russian ruble exchange rate has to do with the price of Moskvich? A Moskvich already costs more than a Mercedes cost not too long ago. And they're going to raise the price by 20%? How is this possible, my friends? I know. It's the Satanists, the evil Americans. They must have hijacked Moskvich marketing and sales department and simply torturing Russian people by raising prices for Chinese cars. Ooh. Oops, did I say Chinese? Russian, of course, Russian cars. Russian. Moving on. But now the good news for a change. Woohoo! Moskvich reported record sales in June. The car factory sold the record 1,504 crossovers. In total, more than 4,000 cars have been sold since the start of sales. Since November 2022, in its eighth month, 4,000 cars were sold in the country with a population of 140 plus million people. Well, that's a true record, all right. But not by Moskvich. That is the Chinese manufacturer Jack. It's not really Moskvich. It's the record set by Vladimir Putin, who has destroyed a Russian car making industry. Moving on. If you liked what you just heard and asking yourself, how can I help this channel? That's easy. To hit the like button to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com or to become a patron on patreon.com. Either way would be nice and appreciated. The links are down below. Thank you. Early morning on 4th of July, there was yet another drone attack on Moscow. Two drones were shot down by air defense system. And guess where? About one mile from my Moscow home. Again. Both drones were literally moving towards my apartment block. Again, Vnukovo airport remained closed for both departures and arrivals. And you know how Russian people are taking this news? News of this attack? They don't care much. It almost seems like they are getting used to the fact that the war has come to Russian territory, let alone Moscow. Moving on. More good news. In Moscow, the head of Attorney General Investigative Office, Tverskoy Precinct of the city of Moscow, Marat Tambiev, was arrested and charged with fraud. He is suspected of receiving a record bribe of 24 million US dollars from hackers. During the search of Tambiev's house, they found a notebook, a personal notebook, with a folder named Pension Retirement with the keys to, <laughs> folks, listen to this, 1,032 bitcoins. That's the size of a pension of a regular head of investigative office of attorney general's office. His official salary is around 3,000 US dollars monthly. In other countries, it is called crime. In other countries, it is called mafia. Moving on. Remember, I keep telling you, that I explain Russia, the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
And now this is ugly. Sochi and St. Petersburg do not have enough marina spots for rich Russian yachts returning from abroad. All docks in popular yacht clubs are occupied at least until the end of summer. All marinas in Crimea, in Sevastopol and in Balaklava are also taken. There's no vacancy. You see, when the war in Ukraine continues, when innocent people keep on dying every day, the rich Russians who benefit from the war are returning their yachts home for the season and their biggest problem is to find a spot to dog their boat. And when sailing season in Russia is over, they will sail back to Europe where they will be greeted with arms wide open. And that, folks, is pretty sad. That's it for the news. And if you want to learn who is responsible for the war and how Russians will be paying for everything, watch my video about that. The link is right here.